Hi, my name is Rob Bauer and I'm a Senior Product Manager at National Instruments. In this video, we're going to take a look at a few of our tools for radar design and system level verification. Now across aerospace and defense, we're seeing that trends such as sensor autonomy, RF convergence, and cognitive techniques are driving the complexity of radar systems to the point where the traditional methods of prototyping and testing these systems just doesn't cut it. Right, on the other hand, our approach is to provide modular instrumentation with open FPGAs so that our users can define the test system or the prototype that they need with off-the-shelf hardware and custom software. Right, so in this system here, in our 18-slot PXI chassis, we're showing both radar emulation and target generation. Here, we have our FlexRio IF transceiver module, which we're using to emulate a pulsed radar. This module features single-channel input, single-channel output at up to 6.4 gigasamples per second with 12 bits of resolution, and a Xilinx ultra-scale FPGA. So we're actually using this module to be the radar. It's generating a pulse chirp, which we then down-convert and digitize with our vector signal transceivers. So the vector signal transceivers acquire up to 1 gigahertz of instantaneous bandwidth, and then we can stream that data over to our quad FPGA module, this ATC8-3671, to actually do the heavy lifting for our, our processing. Right, so there are four big Vertex 7 690Ts on here. If you hear a buzz in the background, it's probably the fans working hard to cool this. Um, so on this FPGA, we're doing Doppler shifting, we're applying gain, uh, we can do uh, FIR filters, um, and then, of course, a delay to emulate the target range. So all the target generations happening on this Vertex 7 FPGA, then we stream the target data, the raw IQ data, back over to our vector signal transceivers, output the signal, combine them, and send them back to the radar emulator. Again, on the Flex Rio, we're doing pulse compression with up to 2.5 gigahertz of instantaneous bandwidth on that ultra-scale FPGA, and then visualizing the response on the screen. So if we take a look at the software, in this display here, we're taking a look at what the actual radar is seeing. So in this bottom display, we're showing the time domain response of our target. Right? So we see echo power on the y-axis and the actual relative range to the peak location on the x-axis. So you can see here we have our two targets moving. In this display here, we're actually taking a look at the range of those targets, so the absolute range over time on the y-axis. Right, so you can see we have one target that's statically positioned and a second target oscillating around there. Now if we flip over here, this is the code that corresponds to the actual target generator. And you can see how it configured for that two target, one moving mode. So if I switch it around, let's say, to two moving targets, you'll see back on the radar that we have two independently functioning targets here moving at different velocities. So let's switch here into the two targets close in mode, and we'll take a look at the impact of the actual pulse compression. So you can see I, I now have two targets that are super close together here in the radar, and it might be difficult for the radar to actually discern them, right, because they're sort of merged here. Now if we were to increase the chirp bandwidth, that'll increase our spatial resolution substantially. You know, not just down here you can clearly see two distinct peaks, but the approximate range resolution we're getting from that increase in bandwidth it's about 37 and a half centimeters range resolution. And now we can see the two targets independently. Another benefit of pulse compression is the resilience to noise. So let's go back down to our 20 megahertz chirp bandwidth. And then over on the radar, in my target generator, I'm going to add a good amount of noise. So adding Gaussian noise here, and you'll see we get to a point where we're no longer able to identify the target. So the, the echo of our target is just totally lost in the noise. So on our radar, if I were operating in that mode and I lost my target, I could increase my chirp bandwidth and suddenly recover those two targets. Right, so that's another benefit of pulse compression is increasing the resilience of a receiver to noise and thus increasing our target distance, our max target distance, etc. So that's a look at a few of our tools for radar design and system level verification. We showed Flex Rio being used for radar emulation. We showed vector signal transceiver and ATCA being used for target generation. For more information, visit ni.com slash flexrio.